may be the disciples of Jesus decided to proclaim, you know what, Jesus came back from the dead so that they could maintain their positions of power and privilege. This is the conspiracy theory for the resurrection of Jesus. So imagine you're one of these disciples, you're trying to keep the dream alive that Jesus is the Messiah. Well, step one, you've got to remove Jesus's body from the tomb because of course, if you go around proclaiming he's alive and the Jewish authorities simply display the dead body of Jesus, well then your story goes up in flames, doesn't it? So step one, steal the body. Oh, and by the way, that will involve overpowering Roman soldiers who were stationed outside the tomb. Are the disciples likely to be able to do that? Well, no, actually, they're certainly not. Remember, they've just witnessed the death of their dear friend crucified before their very eyes. Imagine the kind of grief they are dealing with, how it would affect them. On top of that, we know that these disciples are not trained fighters. Just witness Peter in the Garden of Gethsemane. He swings a sword at someone's head and still doesn't do any more damage than simply take off his ear. These guys are not confident swordsmen. But let's assume they've managed to defeat the Roman guards. They then roll the stone away, incredibly difficult to do, given the way that these stones were rolled into place in kind of dug out ditches in front of these tombs. But they've successfully hidden the body somewhere it will never be found again. And now the other essential thing to make the story stick is that they must all never tell the truth that Jesus is still dead and gone. There are various traditions about what happened to the disciples in the years after the resurrection. Some of those details are up for debate, but here is what is universally agreed upon. They all died grisly, gruesome, pain-filled deaths, and they knew they were going to. They were followers of a crucified man, after all, proclaiming his same message. By some reckonings, five of his apostles were crucified, one of which was upside down. One was buried alive, another was beheaded, two were beaten to death, one was stabbed, and one was sawn in half. Only the apostle John did not die a martyr's death, though he certainly lived out the final years of his life on the prison island called Patmos, presumably nursing the wounds from his near-death experience of being boiled alive in oil. Now, let me ask you, if you were one of those disciples and you had seen, say, nine or ten of your fellow disciples brutally killed, and then it's your turn, you're arrested, and the Romans say, we're going to burn you alive unless you tell the truth about Jesus. What motive would you have for carrying on the lie faced with those circumstances? No, to believe that the disciples engineered the rise of Christianity, which would cause their own physical misery, and they were willing to die for such a lie, is an extraordinary claim that has no foundation in the facts. So how can we explain the transformation that did take place in those disciples that caused them, in fact, to gladly go to their deaths proclaiming Jesus is alive? Here's the only explanation that makes sense. Jesus is alive. If Jesus has been raised from the dead, then all his promises are true and he can be trusted. Forgiveness for sins can be found through faith in him and there is life on the other side of death for all those who repent of their sins. Easter then is a time of great celebration because we know that Jesus is alive.